Hello everyone! Uh, I'm glad many of you enjoyed my video on the Fisher game, analyzing that uh, 21 minute uh, endgame, and uh, a lot of you thought it was uh, very useful, so, so I'm glad. Uh, I will try to prepare a, a, a more educational video like that, perhaps over the weekend or something like that. Uh, but while we're waiting for the results of round 3 of the London Chess Classic, I decided to show you a game, uh, Mikhail Tal against Theodor Gitescu. It's a suggestion from a subscriber. Uh, the game was played in 1963. Uh, the game is called in Soviet Russia Bishop Takes Pawn, even though the game was played in Hungary. I haven't really found the exact reason why the game is called uh, in Soviet Russia Bishop Takes Pawn, but it has something to do uh, with some political wordplay. Uh, may maybe some of you know the answer. If, if you do, do share in the comments. Uh, Teodor Gitescu um, is, a, is a Romanian chess player. He became an international master in 1962, one year before this game was played, uh, and he was uh, awarded the honorary grandmaster title in 1986. So probably due to due to some uh, uh, contributions he made to the chess community, or it, it doesn't say why. And uh, <clears throat> in 1963, uh, at the time this game was played, uh, Teodor Gitescu uh, was the Romanian champion. Uh, he also almost won the Romanian championship four times, he placed second four times and uh, he got third place twice. So definitely a strong player and now he faces Mikhail Tal. Tal has the white pieces uh, and let's see the game. We have e4 by Tal, e5, uh, knight to f3, knight c6, bishop to b5 and a6, the Morphy defense. Uh, bishop to a4. Uh, knight to f6, uh, I, I don't remember if I said that uh, this is the Rui Lopez, the Morphy, Morphy defense variation of the Rui Lopez. Uh, Tal castles, bishop to e7, uh, rook to e1, b5, uh, bishop to b3, and here uh, Gitescu goes for d6. Uh, I don't know if I have shown any martial, martial attack games, uh, I think I, I did one video on the martial attack. If, if you remember, uh, castling here is uh, sort of like inviting white uh, to accept the martial attack, uh, inviting him to play c3, and after d5 we enter the martial attack. Uh, but after bishop to b3, d6 by Gitescu, c3, uh, Gitescu castles, h3 now, uh, h6, d4, uh, rook to e8, knight b to d2, uh, bishop to f8, uh, knight to f1, uh, to, uh, transferring the knight to the king side with knight to g3. From there, he will be either able to jump to f5 or h5. Uh, bishop to d7, uh, knight g3, knight a5 now with a tempo on the light square bishop here. Uh, bishop to c2 and c5. And this is still all theory. Uh, Tal, uh, he could play something like d5 to close up the position, uh, but he goes for b3. Uh, we have g6 now. Uh, bishop to e3, knight to c6, uh, d5 kicking the knight away, knight to e7, and queen to d2. Tal is uh, preparing to capture the h6 pawn, and uh, well, you kind of do have to defend this either by pushing g5 or king to h7. Uh, king to h7 was played by Gitescu, and uh, what, what do you play here as white? Well, there certainly are a lot of options here. Uh, you could uh, maybe, maybe try to improve the position of your rook, rook a to c1, uh, rook to b1, depending on what you want to go for. c4 is an idea, uh, but uh, as the game say in Soviet Russia, bishop takes pawn, uh, Tal plays bishop captures on c5. What's the idea here? Uh, you do have to capture the bishop, there isn't really a better move. d captures on c5 and knight captures on e5. So Tal gives up a piece for two central pawns, and that by itself uh, is compensation enough. Uh, knight to c8 uh, by Gitescu and now f4. Uh, there seems to be uh, this move, knight captures on f7, nothing is protecting this pawn. But what would happen if Tal captures it? Uh, if knight cap, sorry, uh, f4 was played, but if knight captures on f7 with a tempo on the queen, uh, now queen to e7, uh, trapping the knight, and okay, he does have knight to g5 with check, uh, and after h captures, e5 now. And uh, any move other than capturing the pawn with the knight would result uh, in a massive center for white. So after knight captures on d5 and queen captures, uh, knight to b6 and uh, black pretty much solved all of his problems. Uh, there, there's r no real advantage here for white. Uh, so after knight to c8, uh, Tal doesn't capture uh, the f7 pawn, he plays f4. He improves his center and uh, locks that knight on e5. 
uh, queen to e7 now, c4, uh, adding more protection to the d5 pawn, uh, bishop to g7, and now knight to f3. Now Tal is preparing to push e5. Uh, b captures on c4, b captures on c4, and knight to d6. And it seems like Gitesco is inviting Tal to push e5 now and uh, attack both of the knights, but he does, ha does have this knight to c4 with a tempo on the queen. Uh, but Tal does push e5, we have knight captures on c4, and now queen to c3. And here Gitesco plays bishop to b5. He protects his knight and gives up the f6 knight. Uh, but Tal isn't interested in this knight, he plays rook a to d1. Uh, what would happen after e captures on f6 and the queen captures on f6, uh, you, you pretty much have to go for the endgame here. Uh, queen captures, bishop captures, and after something like rook a to c1, uh, since the bishop was attacking your rook, rook captures, rook captures on e1, and uh, there is there is nothing here for Tal. Black, black is better in this endgame. Uh, the the bishop pair and uh, the plays on both sides of the board uh, <clears throat> a much a much better <clears throat> sorry a much better position for Black. So after bishop to b5, rook a to d1 by Tal, uh, rook a to d8, and we have d6 now. And uh, here, knight captures on d6 was played, allowing these pawns uh, to stay here freely. Uh, if you play something like queen, uh, queen to f8, then uh, e captures on f6 without a problem. Uh, so knight captures on d6, e captures on d6, and now queen to b7. Uh, and knight to e5. And okay, uh, Tal, Tal got back his piece, and uh, he does have this beautifully passed, uh, passed d-pawn and uh, black will have to play extremely correctly to survive this. Uh, knight to d7, he wants to exchange uh, a pair of knights, and here it comes uh, the only move that really gives uh, Tal the advantage in the position. Uh, Tal plays knight to h5. Uh, you can't capture the knight, of course, uh, the bishop pins this pawn, and uh, this uh, dark square bishop on g7 is, is, is a valuable uh, defensive piece, so uh, you have to play bishop to h8, not allow the knight to capture it. Uh, queen to g3 now, and now Tal, Tal piles up on this g6 pawn. The knight is attacking it, the bishop is attacking it, and the queen is attacking it. Uh, so knight captures on e5, removing one of the attackers, but now f captures on e5, uh, and now Tal has these uh, two past central pawns, and these pawns are, are monsters. So queen to d7. It's uh, not easy to find a good move for, for black here, queen d7 is a good move, uh, but knight to f4 now, again piling up on the g6 pawn, uh, bishop captures on e5, and now bishop captures on g6 with check. Uh, here Gitesco plays king to h8. Uh, what would happen if he captures the bishop? If f captures on g6, uh, then queen captures on g6, and after king to h8, uh, rook captures on e5, pretty simple. Uh, rook captures, and now uh, queen to f6 check, uh, attacking this rook, attacking this rook, uh, and after queen to g7 you simply capture the rook, uh, rook blocks, and now queen to c7, offering to exchange queens and uh, get your pawn all the way to c7, uh, a completely winning position for white. So after bishop to g6, king to h8 was played, uh, and now Tal plays bishop captures on f7, he again offers the bishop. Uh, and here, bishop to d4 check was played by Gitescu. Uh, again, what happens if the bishop is captured? If queen captures on f7, uh, then knight to g6 check, king h7, and the simple knight captures on e5, uh, uh, a winning position for white. Uh, so after bishop to f7, bishop to d4 check first, and uh, again, uh, this is a very nice position. Uh, if Tal played something like king to h1 here, just to get out of the way, now queen captures on f7 works for black. Uh, because knight to g6 check, and there is no bishop on e5 for this knight to capture. So this would actually blunder the game for Tal. Uh, so after bishop to d4, Tal plays the only move that allows uh, him to keep his advantage, that is rook captures on d4. Uh, rook captures on e1 with check by Gitesco, queen captures on e1, and uh, queen captures now on f7. Uh, we have queen to e5 with check. Uh, and what do you play here? Queen to g7 was played, and now simply queen captures on c5. Uh, Tal could have gone for something like queen captures on g7 with check, uh, and after king captures, knight uh, to e6, pinning the, uh, forking the king and the rook, and after something like uh, king to f5, uh, f6, not capturing the rook, but simply knight captures on, c, on c5, 
and uh, two, being two pawns up this is uh, also winning for white but y you'll still have to work for your, for your victory. Uh, so after queen to g7 Tal simply played queen captures on c5, uh, now he's up two pawns, he has a beautiful pass pawn on d6. Uh, uh, <laughs> Gitesco tried one more idea, he played bishop to c6, uh, threatening checkmate on g2 and of course uh, if you play something like queen captures on c6 you get queen captures on d4 with the check uh, and now of course you're losing the game as white, so after bishop to c6. Uh, rook to d2 was played, now defending checkmate, and in this position uh, Teodor Gitescu, the Romanian uh, honorary grandmaster, resigned the game. Uh, I mean, he could have gone for something, but it's actually uh, winning by force uh, for Tal. Um, this bishop is attacked on, on, the, on uh, c6, and after, after bishop to d7, uh, knight to h5, and the queen has no more squares on this dark square, dark diagonal, only move is queen to a1 check. After queen to a1 check, king to h2, uh, you have to play something, rook to e8, and now rook to f2, uh, queen to e5 check, uh, you simply exchange, exchange, and after knight, uh, knight to f6, uh, you're winning the bishop on d7. Uh, if, if bishop moves simply d7, and uh, the knight is preventing the rook from stopping the pawn, uh, the rook can stop the pawn from d5 or from... Uh, e8 as the pawn is also protecting e8 so you'd have to capture it, knight captures and you're up a piece and a pawn uh, completely winning. Uh, this is just one of the variations that shows uh, how, how powerful the position is. So yeah, uh, after this uh, rook to d2 move protecting checkmate, uh, Gitesco resigned the game and this uh, beautiful uh, game was created by Mikhail Tal as uh, bishop did capture pawn on c5 in Soviet Russia. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Haiti Kender for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you soon, this time for real, uh, with a game from London Chess Classic Round 3.